Hi, I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about group home. So another option that I've considered over the years is that of a group home. Now, if you're open to having your loved one live away from you, this could be a viable option for you to consider. Now, I need to pause here and say that I am only considering group homes specifically focused on meeting the needs of adults with special needs. Now, I know there are other kinds of group homes and they meet the needs of their focus group. However, their needs are likely to be significantly different from that of uh, individuals with special needs and what they have and face. Therefore, my personal decision has been that I will only consider group homes that focus specifically on adults with special needs. Now, I also need to say up front that I have no personal experience with group homes. I've also heard very few stories of people who've lived in group homes. So much of this post are purely thoughts that I've had over the years of considering this for AJ. Now, group home living can feel like you're moving out on your own while still providing the support that your loved one requires to live independently. They're no longer living with family, therefore they're on their own. At the same time, you have peace of mind knowing that someone is around who will make sure that they're safe and their needs are cared for. Group homes also create a built-in social circle. Many times they participate in many different social activities. Now, some may be as simple as shopping regularly, but many of the activities have a definite social component to them bowling, going to a bar, going to movies, that kind of thing. A socially involved loved one brings peace of mind. Each group home has trained staff available to meet your loved one's needs. This is definitely an important requirement and one that can provide great peace of mind. Providing a safe environment for individuals with special needs includes providing correct meds at the proper times, preparing healthy meals, enforcing rules, and so many other things. Similarly, knowing that the staff hopefully are working in this job because they truly care about individuals with special needs and want to help them reach their fullest potential also provides a level of peace of mind. Working with individuals with special needs is definitely a calling. I'm discovering that more people have this calling than I ever imagined. Finally, staff provides transportation to all appointments and makes sure that the transportation to and from work happens on an acceptable timetable. Not having to make sure all of these details are working smoothly is a great relief to caregivers and family members. Now on the flip side, I find myself coming back to the same concern over and over again. I find myself concerned about the staff or the staff turnover. While I want to believe that people choosing to work in a special needs group home do so because of their interest in and love for these individuals, I know that's not always the case. Wanting to work with these individuals doesn't mean you can do so successfully. Personality clashes, among many other things, can get in the way of creating an inviting climate for others to live in peacefully and successfully. But I find myself concerned about a couple other things as well. How long does each staff member tend to stay around? If the current staff has been in place for years, the stability that provides would be incredible. On the other hand, a high turnover rate would raise some red flags in my mind. What happens if a new staff member or a new group home member enters the house and has significant issues with someone else in the home? Will they be moved? If so, how quickly? And how will the situation be handled in the meantime? How much access is encouraged with family members? Now, while I'm all for AJ living independently, at this point in time, I have no intention of leaving his overall care to others. Now, I'm excited for him to discover his independence and to live as independently as he can handle successfully. However, I still plan to participate in things like his health care, work environment and behavior, and other important areas. I also want information on how he's doing socially and what activities he's involved in. Now, what happens if your loved one isn't able or chooses not to follow the rules of the house? Will they be asked to leave? How quickly will they be expected to leave the house? Now, while we all hope that this doesn't happen, it's nice to know ahead of time what the parameters and expectations are. So the next question is, how do you start finding options in your area? Well, that's a great question and a pretty important one. Here's a couple routes that I've taken. First, I was informed about group homes by a couple different agencies in our area. These are agencies that I was opening cases for in their area of support. Sometimes in passing, other times in part, as part of the conversation, they mention group homes and the fact that they're available in our area. So if you have any organizations that you're currently working with, I'd start by asking them. They should know what services and opportunities are available in your area and can point you in the right direction. Now, another thing that I've done, I just simply Googled group homes or group homes for special needs adults and a city and a state. 
Now, I did this when we tossed around the idea of moving to a new state a few months ago. That Google search provided me with the names of two or three different organizations in that city, and they looked promising. Now, I haven't pursued them beyond that search, but it's nice to know that in this day and age, a couple of minutes can provide some quick answers. Now, yes, I realize a Google search needs a lot of research and questions asked before deciding to follow something found there. However, it's a great place to get the ball rolling. Or even if it's just to find out if what you're looking for is a possibility. Now, I'd also ask, start by asking around. Friends, family, and social media can all provide leads for you to follow up on. Now, it's unlikely that you'll have the perfect solution handed to you with no research necessary. However, knowing a starting point and a way to find contact information provides reassurance that you're not on this journey alone. So here's a few final thoughts for you. If your loved one is high functioning enough to live with a level of independence, consider a group home. It could be a great alternative to, for providing the extra support that your loved one needs while giving them a level of independence. Now also be willing to research, ask hard questions, and push for satisfactory and realistic answers before deciding. Look for reactions from differing sources, family members, community, workers, that kind of thing. Check out the specific home your loved one may be living in before making a final decision. Now be ready to move and accept or decline quickly as soon as your offer is extended. Now in my area, a week is a long response time I've been told. So I need to be ready to visit and decide within a day or two if possible. And finally, keep, consider keeping or having an emergency plan in place in case the situation suddenly becomes unacceptable. For example, we've decided that we will always have a room for AJ to live in if his living situation becomes unacceptable and can't be changed in an acceptable amount of time. Now, I don't know that any of us are gonna be that excited about bringing him home again, but it gives me peace of mind knowing I won't have to leave him in a bad or unhealthy situation. So my question for you this week is this, have you considered a group home for your loved one? Why or why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave me a comment below, or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. That's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in May of 2021. I'm still considering group homes for AJ so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment.